Like cooking, everything has a recipe. A set of instructions to follow in order to gain a certain result. Music is no different. Be it ingredients for a dish, a set list for an amazing show, or a release strategy for a successful launch. These are all recipes. Hi, we're your hosts, Sean. And I'm Brandon. Come and join us in our kitchen as we go through the Music Makers Cookbook. Let's get cooking. Welcome to the Music Makers Cookbook, the podcast where we help independent artists cook up recipes for success in the music industry. My name is Sean, and unfortunately, it's just me today. My co-chef, Brandon, is not available. He's had a very busy schedule so far in 2024, which, you know, awesome for him. So he won't be uh, dining in with us today. He won't be cooking with us. So today we're in my home studio, my home base, my kitchen. So I've got a great recipe for you today. I'm excited to talk about it's going to be weird being without him, just me flying solo or trying something new, but we really wanted to get you an episode on Tuesday consistently week after week after week. Consistency is a huge thing, and that's why that's why I'm here today. With all that being said, I'm very excited to talk about today's episode. It's about different ingredients that you can use for your recipes for success in 2024. Since it's a new year, I feel like it's a good time to kind of reset and talk about some broad topics all the way across the spectrum that if you focus on... All of them throughout the year, not all at once, but if you do go throughout the year and do a little bit under each of these 10 ingredients, you'll end up way further beyond where you are now. So I'm really excited to dig into those. On top of that, I just want to say, if this is your first time listening, thank you for coming in and listening to this podcast. It's usually more entertaining than this because I usually got a co-host, but thank you for listening. And if you are a repeat listener and you're tuning back in, thank you for tuning back in and dealing with just me today. Hopefully I can make this as educational, entertaining as possible. And it's not just me rambling on for 20, 30 minutes. It's going to be a little bit shorter, but hey, you know what? That happens. (laughs) All this stuff we're going to be talking about, these 10 ingredients, we have actually converted them into specific posts on our Instagram platform. So if you want to go and see a visual of it, there's going to be posts on a blog page on my website, which I'm going to have a link to, as well as if you want to follow us on Instagram, you'll be able to go back and read this as well as a bunch of other information, a bunch of other insights, episode recaps, behind the scenes stuff, short clips of these podcast episodes to get the information a lot quicker. So be sure to check us out on there. TikTok, YouTube as well, we're we're everywhere. And we're just going to be cranking it up in 2024. It's a huge part of what we're doing, so we're looking forward to it. With that being said, enough of me prefacing, enough of me kind of going on and on about what this episode's going to be about. Let's dive in, jump into it, get into the meat and potatoes, and start cooking. And to cook, we need to get ingredients down. So to start off with the first music-making ingredient, that would be develop a unique sound. Now, once I said, again, I said these are going to be very broad topics. It's not going to be super specific today, but developing a unique sound is incredibly hard to do, but incredibly important to do. But let me just say this. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. Because when I say develop a unique sound, I'm not saying something that was never done before. It's really hard to do something completely fresh, completely new, chord structures, uh, keys, genres, all that stuff has been done. It's tried and true. People <laughs> like what they like to listen to. And I'm sure you like to listen to what you like to listen to as well, which is a very roundabout way of me saying <laughs> your influences. That is how you find and develop your unique sound. Uh, there's a saying in um, business development and all that that says innovation happens when two or more things that already exist are combined in a new way. So take the influences that inspire you and combine them in a way that hasn't been done before. But when I say that, I mean like import what is important to you into it. Don't just take these two influences or not even that. Don't even take one influence and try to only do that. Like, oh man, I really like the sound of Ed Sheeran. I want to be the next Ed Sheeran. Don't do that. Bring yourself to it and combine Ed Sheeran with somebody else and make it truly your own. That's the only way you can create something new, the only way you can develop a unique sound because you don't want to be pigeonholed into something, one, that you're not because you're not Ed Sheeran. You shouldn't want to sound exactly like him. If you do, people aren't as inclined to listen to you because they've got the original and you might get bored of performing it or making it because you're not putting any of yourself into it. What are your influences? Combine them. Do something uniquely you and that's how you find your unique sound. That's ingredient number one. 
Ingredient number two, once again, very broad, is build a strong brand. If you can focus on developing a strong brand in 2024, and at the end of it, you have consistency across all of that you're doing, it's good. you're going to be way above where you've been at the start of this. So just to put some clarity to it, building a brand as an artist is more than just the music. It's also your image, your messaging, the emotions that you want to evoke with what you do, your live shows, your performances, your merchandise, everything you do to help cook up success, everything you cook needs to have a consistency about it. So when someone sees it, they say, yes, this is this is this artist. This is what it's about. It's, it's you. And there's clarity throughout everything that you make with it. So... For example, some great artists that do this are Brandon wouldn't would be angry with me if I didn't bring up Taylor Swift. She does a phenomenal job with it. And what she does is that she has different eras. So for every single album, there's a different fashion, there's a different style uh, to the album, there's a different sound, a different vibe, and it's more so than just her on stage personas, it's how she addresses and physically dresses and communicates with her fans outside of how it's presented on the album. But the album has a color scheme, her fashion has a color scheme, everything has a color scheme. And that's why her heiress tour is so successful, because she has very distinct visual aspects to her albums that she covers throughout her whole career. And people who are fans of it want to represent and recreate certain kinds of eras, so they recreate the outfits, and it just makes it such more of a movement versus a look. Madonna did the same thing, 21 Pilots did the same thing, every single one of their albums has a very unique color scheme. But you don't have to make it different after every album. A band that does it consistently is a band like Kiss. They're a juggernaut when it comes to marketing and putting out merchandise. And every single one of their albums has a... I mean, there are differences. I'm not because there's not differences. They do evolve. But they have a core foundation that is a through line throughout all of their albums, all their releases, all their artwork. They have the face paint. They have the leather. They have the logo there that does not change. It is consistent. That's their big thing. But when you see it, you know it's them. And it allows them to use it to market it on pinball machines, on shirts, on anything you can think of. Because when you see it, you know what it is. You know who it is and you know the kind of music that it creates. That is a strong brand. So how can you make yours a strong brand if you start using that ingredient? Put your brand in your shows, in your merch. You'll go to the next level, especially if you put it in social media. The next ingredient, number three, is to really, really focus and try to create high quality music this year. Now, even in genres like lo-fi, there is a difference in quality between good lo-fi and bad lo-fi. This can be kind of hard to do. I'm not saying go out there and blow tens of thousands of dollars on professional studio time and the best studio musicians to get this killer sound, especially if you're not there yet. If you are there, by all means do it. But what can you do to take a little extra care in the quality of your recordings? If you ever heard of the two sayings, shit in, shit out, or you can't try to shit, <laughs> this really goes true. It rings true when it comes to your music. If you're recording in a horrible room with a horrible space, with bad mic presence, with a lot of distortion, like you're clipping the input gain or there's a fan in the background or whatnot, Yes, there's some technology that can help remove or reduce certain of these sounds, but it's never, it's never as good as if you just got a good, clear recording in the first place. There are plenty of techniques you can do. In fact, I think it was episode three where we talk about some home recording techniques, so check that out if you're interested in learning more about it. But if you're recording at home on a budget, listen to your mics, use the strength of them, and implement those in your recording techniques. Go to the best sounding room of your house, try recording in different locations, turn off your AC, turn off your fans, anything that can make noise. Don't have your dishwasher running or any plumbing running. If you have a noise neighbor, record when they're out of the house. Do whatever you can to get as good of a quality recording as possible so that you can ensure that your music sounds professional and your fans want to keep taking bites. Now, the fourth ingredient is to know your audience. Now, we talk about this in, I believe it's episode two, where we talk about how to define your brand, but also how to define what your songs are about. And this also talks about how to position yourself so that you can communicate to who your fans specifically are. Now, if you don't know who your fan base is, 
a great place to start is the fact that most of us make music for who we used to be. A lot of us as musicians make music that we want to hear. And when we make it, we make it for what we want to hear in the moment, which is now us in the past. That's a very roundabout way of saying it. But if you don't know who to market to, look at who you were when you were writing it and what your influences were when you were writing it and market that music to yourself. Because there are bound to be plenty of people like you, especially with the internet. The world is so much more connected and closer than ever has been before. So that is a fantastic spot to know where to start marketing and and where to start putting your music. So like what kind of playlist to submit your music to, what kind of forums to talk on, what kind of merch to make. If you were, were the kind of person who would buy a beanie or a vinyl record at a live show, sell beanies and vinyl records. Don't sell, you know, packs of playing cards or whatever it is that you wouldn't buy. Start off by selling the things that are more interesting to you and people who you want to relate to your music, who you made the music for. So this can be a kind of a long process. Just sit down, get some, get some thoughts about it, plan that all out. And if you start knowing who your audience is and how you want to approach them and how you're going to go find them, you're going to know where they are and this will help your music grow throughout 2024. Episode, an episode, <laughs> ingredient number five. Oof. Man, this is hard to do without Brandon. I, I miss the man. I hope he's doing okay. He is doing okay. I'm just, I'm just rambling on a little bit. But ingredient number five is to utilize social media. Now, you can do it without social media. You can be successful in the music industry without it. Some people don't like it. That's okay. Just know you're going to have to perform live a lot, do a lot of shows, get out there, meet people, communicate. And that's how you're going to connect to people. People have been doing this for decades before social media was a thing. So it's totally fine. You can hop on, do interviews, radio shows, podcasts, whatever you want to do, go out in person and whatnot, and not utilize social media. But just know that it is how a vast majority of people find new things, communicate and share what they care about, what they're excited for in modern society. So utilizing social media, definitely build it as part of your game plan. But not only saying, oh, I've got a Facebook page, so I'm good. Each platform has its own algorithm, which has its own strengths and weaknesses. Like YouTube and TikTok are better for growth, while Instagram and Twitter are better for nurturing. Well, I guess it's X now. Man, <laughs> that's better for nurturing fans versus gaining new fans. So kind of know what kind of content you're posting where, making stuff that's specifically for these platforms so that you can use them as a strength. Don't just take a wide video, music video format and crop it to vertical because then everything just suffers. If you're going to do it, do it right. Once again, the high quality sound also applies to high quality visuals, but do the best you can to do the strengths of each platform and utilize it when you need to, whatever season you're in, whether you're in a growth season, a rest season, a creation season, whatever it is, you can use social media in all of these. That's episode 20 of our podcast if you want to learn about seasons. But uh, yeah, if you can start utilizing that more and really developing your approach to it to be consistent and avoid burnout, that is a huge thing you can do in 2024. Number six, Brandon will be really mad at me for saying this, but uh, I'm going to say network with other musicians. He thinks networking is kind of a dirty word. I, I don't think it is. It's more uh, businessy, but it's not necessarily like dirty. I mean, you're going out, you're meeting people. Just make friends. Go out there. Be friendly. You really can't have too many friends in the music business. You can't know too many people. You can't know too many producers, too many venue owners, too many blog article writers, or too many other musicians. Or You just can't know too many people because you never know where a connection will form, how someone will think of you, and how you'll get your next show, your next gig, your next fan, your next show, whatever it may be. So don't be afraid to build relationships. Collaborate on projects. If there are other bands in your area, you can collaborate on putting together a full show, not just, hey, we're playing here, put together a full-on show, an event. So you can collaborate in that regards, work with them to build material for it, like promotional material, show material. If you want to have special lights or whatnot, and they have some lights and you have some lights, combine them together, make it so it's something special. Collaborate in that regards. Also, features. Those are cool. <laughs> Having somebody else be on your song, be in your track, that brings their fans, 
potentially unto what you're doing, which builds both of you up because it introduces your fans to them as well. Uh, we're kind of doing the same thing. Episode 32, we had an interview with It's Ernie. And part of the reason we're doing interviews moving forward in 2024 is to, you know, have expanding our reach as well, work with other people. In the music industry, you want to grow together. It's about the people. Almost as much, if not more, as it's about the music. It's about the people. Number seven, seven-tenths of the way there, is perform live regularly. I know it can be kind of scary or hard to do if you're not used to it, and if you've never done it before, you might not know where to start. If you've never done it before, there's a bunch of coffee shops or local areas that are bars or whatever that host open mics. That's a great place to go, start, try off new ideas, new songs, gauge people's reactions, meet other artists, other creators. It's a very low stakes place to try out performing. Once that grows, once you meet some other artists that are also at the open mics, or if you go to local shows, you can connect with them and over time build a rapport so you can hop on their ticket so you can pr perform before them or be the opener for the night or whatnot to get your door into the venue and kind of start going from there. And I say perform live regularly because performing live shows help you build a loyal fan base, make new connections and increase your exposure. But that being said, don't play too frequently in one location. Like don't play at the same venue every week, every two weeks, maybe not even every month. You want to kind of move around the area so it doesn't get stale. You don't want one person thinking, oh, I'm not going to go tonight because I'll just see them next week when they perform. No, you, every time you come in town, every time you perform at this venue, you want the people in the area to come and show up. You want to make it special. You don't want to overdo it. But you still got to perform live regularly. So that means you should hop between towns, hop between cities, maybe even go between states if you're in the states or wherever you are at. Try to go out maybe on tour for a weekend, hit up a couple spots in the city. Just do what you can to get out there, get used to performing, get used to the experience, and just meet people on the road. A lot of people in the industry are at these live shows, are out there doing these sorts of things. One venue owner probably knows another venue owner. The sound guy probably knows another band that he's done that maybe has a similar vibe to you that you can be introduced to. The band you performed with maybe want you to come with them on the next tour. So just get out there, get performing, get used to it. Practice before you do. We've got a whole series about having successful live shows, episode 16, no, episode 13 to episode 17, I believe. So check those out if you want to learn more about the whole process of live shows. But perform regularly in 2024, and once again, you'll, you'll grow as an independent artist. Ingredient number eight. Okay. Offer merchandise. Merch is a great way to make money. And in fact, it's one of the only ways to make money <laughs> since, you know, you very rarely, especially when you're starting off, you're not going to make much, if anything, from royalties off of Spotify or Apple Music or whatnot. So merch is a great way to kind of help recover costs for the studio, for mixing, for mastering, for anything out there. So just offer merch. And I've, I've been to so many live shows. I've been to so many local live shows where the band's performing. None of them have a merch booth. Most venues have a space for a merch booth. Talk to them beforehand. Hey, can I bring a can I bring a folding table and some gear? And they'll say yes. And then you'll bring your folding table and some gear, and you'll bring along your significant other or a close friend of yours to man the table when you're performing. And when you're not performing, you're gonna go back by the table and tell people you're gonna be by the table, and you're gonna sell merchandise and you're gonna make money from it, and it's gonna help build your career. Make merch. <laughs> but don't only Make your merch. Highlight it. As I said, when you're on stage, tell them, hey, if you want to talk to me after the show, I'll be by my merch table and point to where it's going to be. It's in the back by the bar. And then check out the bar while you're there. But encourage people to go to your merch table. You can always run raffles or giveaways to get people excited about it or do contests at the merch table or whatever it is to get people there. People that want to support you it needs to be as easy as possible for them to do that. They need to know where they need to go, what they can buy, what they can do to help you in your career and to support you as an artist because fans want to support you. People want to support you. So yeah, if nobody knows you have merch, they're not going to buy it. So make it very, make it very well known. Put it on your socials. Talk about it during the show. Make some jokes out of it. Build it into your set, your banter between songs so people know that you have stuff 
people know they can buy it and make sure that you have a good inventory. It's easy to pull up what they're looking for. If you have multiple shirt sizes, make sure it's easy for them to get to the right shirt size. And whoever you're having man the booth when you're not there is able to do it easily. But just, yeah, have merch, have merch, have merch. Next, number nine, engage with your fans. Respond to comments, hold questions and answers, or ask me anything sessions. Create a community around your music. Some of these you can do in person. Some of these you can do online. Whatever it is, just build connections. Anything that... And when you're smaller, it's much easier to do. And stay as consistent with it as long as you can. Because these simple interactions online or after a show or whatnot, they might be simple to you. Oh yeah, I'm just meeting somebody. I've met thousands of people. But to the person who was reaching out, who was talking to you, they got to meet the artist. They got to meet the star of the show. This is a cool and special moment for them. So take it seriously, treat them with respect, and make it make it fun, you know? And and build a community. If you are if you're on social media and you sell band shirts at your shows, ask people to send you pictures of themselves at the shows and make a reel out of it. And ask them anything. Say, hey, what was your favorite experience at the show? Make it about them as well, what their experience is. Talk to people after the shows. Ask them questions. Hold a VIP thing where they can meet and greet afterwards. Whatever it is, be it online or in person, just engage with your fans. Learn from them. Know what songs they like. Know what songs they don't. All that kind of stuff. Because... Even a basic interaction with someone can turn them from a listener into a true fan once they have this one-on-one rapport, relationship, interaction with you that is going to stick in their mind because you're the artist, they went there to see you, and you gave them the time of day. That's just hugely important. So take care of your fans. Wow, we're at number 10 already. (laughs) This is the final one of the show. Man. Yeah, we're about 23 episodes in. Uh, not 23 episodes, but 20 minutes in, 23 minutes into this episode right now. I said it was going to be a shorter one, so uh, I think I'm I think I'm think wasting some time now. We should probably dive into number 10, and that is to invest in music videos. This is very interesting to me personally because music videos, the rise of MTV and all that going on, YouTube and whatnot, music videos can be very influential, very impactful. People like sharing them. But you don't have to go all out necessarily. And also nowadays, it's not necessarily the long videos of the full song that make the most impact. Times are changing. As you know, TikTok, shorts, reels, all this vertical video versus horizontal video is a thing. And it completely changes, it completely changed the whole landscape of what music videos are. So this is a very interesting ingredient. You're going to want to stay tuned throughout 2024 and see what's kind of impactful as you go about, you know, doing this. Vision is very, very important. How things look registers in our brain. It's one of our most active senses out of all the ones we have, smell, taste, touch, whatever. Vision is a very heavily weighted one what things look like help grab our attention. So having a video alongside your music can really honestly take things to the next level, can add another dynamic that makes fans really excited and want to engage in your music in a whole different way than they have before. It can attract a whole wider audience. I mean, even just a simple lyric video, just a black screen with the words on top of it is better than nothing. People want to hear the lyrics of the song, so if even something basic like that, they can look at the words and sing along or read along and know what the song's about. This reminds me of, of a quick story when YouTube was first kicking off. Bruno Mars released, I think it was Grenade was the song for this story. Anyways, Bruno Mars releases a grenade, and a fan makes a lyric video for that song and posts it on YouTube. Bruno Mars and his team didn't have any sort of lyric videos out on their YouTube channel, didn't have any videos like that, nothing for the song Grenade on their channel. This fan-made lyric video that was literally just a black stream with the words on top of it, I think it had like 1.2 million views before it was noticed by the label. 
and they copyright claimed it because the song was on and whatnot. And then any revenue since then went toward Bruno Mars and their team. And, you know, whatever, whatever, the whole revenue aspect of it, they missed out on 1.2 million plays. That revenue could have gone to them. They missed out on 1.2 million eyeballs in the song that could have subscribed to Bruno Mars's channel and seen the next thing that he put out. Now, that just shows how important it is to have at least a very basic video out there on different platforms that talk about the lyrics. There are plenty of platforms out there you can do this. I'm going to do a, I want to talk to Brandon, do a deep dive into making video content later on. That'll be one of the episodes in the future, so keep tuned for that. But for now, just know that video can really, really make a difference. And even going beyond that, even more than just simple lyric video, recording different scenes, different uh, music videos vertically that last anywhere from 8 to 20 seconds, that's now huge in the industry. It's blowing up. That's kind of how the direction music videos are going. They're going to take a, a verse, a chorus, a hook, whatever really sticks out in the song, record a short of it, post it, see what happens, try different, try different choruses, different verses, different takes of the same verses, and see what works, and just make some 8 to 20 second things. And post those out there too. Those are really quick ways to make video content of your music to go out there. And we can go into the whole visual aspect of it, like increase the saturation a little bit so it's more eye-catching. Within the first couple of seconds, that's where you want to have your effects and your automations at the start front load the video because it grabs people's attention. If you want a longer video, make sure about halfway through there's a big change up in the song, whether the chorus hits and all these strings come in or a different singer comes on or whatnot so that people stay interested throughout the whole video. Not They don't get bored after about 10 seconds or whatnot. All these things we can talk about more, but just know that if you invest in your visual aspect of your music, not just the auditory aspect of your music, that'll really help increase your reach expand your fan base, and help you grow in 2024. And that's it. <laughs> that's all the 10 ingredients that I have so far. I'm going to be, as I said, I've already posted five of these to Instagram. So follow us and you'll see the graphics for each 10 of these ingredients. And I'm going to be posting beyond that. 11, 12, 50, 100, as long as I can keep thinking of ingredients, which there's always going to be ingredients as the music industry is constantly changing, we'll be posting that information on our Instagram, so make sure to check that out, as I said, and as well as a bunch of other content's going to be out there as well. Thank you for listening this far. I really appreciate it. I hope that I was able to make this episode informational and entertaining. If you miss Brandon like I did, please give us a message, shoot us the DM, leave a comment below us saying, we miss you, Brandon. Come back, Brandon. You're the better looking of the two, Brandon. We need you there, Brandon. Anyways, uh, with that all being said, that is our ingredients. That was this recipes. Go out there, cook it on your own, throw in your own ingredients. Thank you for listening to this. And I'm still Brandon's Thunder, but... Bon appetit.